All right, you ready? So I can go ahead and start it? Yes. Perfect. Hola y bienvenidos. Hello and welcome to another year where we will present some of the results for the Colorado College State of the Rockies uh, survey. This is uh, Vanessa talking, I'm interpreting for her, and today we have an opportunity to speak uh, over the results of the survey. Um, we have people from our community who are going to share their stories because it's not a secret that the climate changes are affecting all of us around the world. But before we start, we have um, our keynote speaker who is going to share some words with us. This is Karina Mesa. She is the chief of communications um, or communications manager. Um, and now Karina speaking. Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Karina Mesa, and I am the manager of communications of Hispanic Access Foundation. I'm happy to share this moment with you and to present the results for this year for the Latina community uh, from the Colorado College survey. This is a very important survey because it shows us how much our um, environment is important for the Latino community. We can ask ourselves, why is it so important? Because when we speak about conservation, we speak so much more about protecting the lands, the waters, and the climate that her surrounds us. Conservation also deals with our health, our economy, our culture, the well-being of our families, and social justice, with the equity as a key, uh, a fundamental key um, to these processes and the necessities of um, the communities of color, um, we can have a future where all of the children will have access to nature. Nature is not a luxury. It's a necessity for the health and well-being of everyone. In the communities of color, we observe um, and we notice a lot less air to filter the air, to provide um, shade in hot days. There are less um, swamps um, that also protect the community from um, flooding. There are less parks, uh, less walkways and paths where people can stretch their legs. And there are less public spaces where people from different races, cultures, and origins can speak about their uh, common experiences um, or their shared experiences that provide a sense of, um, of confidence uh, in the community. And um, the results here are very important. Um, the results this year also showed that there is a big worry among communities of color um, in themes that affect our public lands and the future of our lands, waters, and uh, air in addition to the wildlife. And the future of uh, nature um, and also the areas uh, of natural spaces are uh, considered very bad. And this survey shows that Latinos are ready to be listened to and that we are worried about climate impacts and we want to face the issues of climate change. Uh, now that we are nearing uh, a year of elections um, where the uh, national polit uh, politicians try to face these issues, we need to recognize the legacy of racism and imperialism that has existed in this country. And it's important for us to focus on equity and justice and give priority to marginalized voices. We need to prioritize and integrate voices that often go unheard. And um, this is our um, goal for a positive change in this nation. Thank you. Vanessa dice muchísimas gracias Karina por todo y lo que mencionó Karina quiere, es que nos acercamos, that we are faced a, um, uh, an electoral year and this was Karina, who is the uh, manager of communications for um, Hispanic Access Foundation. So the mission uh, for Hispanic Access is to create a uh, an equitable society. One day, we want every Hispanic in the United States to enjoy a healthy, balanced lifestyle. Um, uh, 
uh, quality education, economic success, and civic um, commitment uh, to their communities um, with the purpose of creating a better future for the United States. So here we're looking at the team. This is everybody who's part of the conservation team that make all of this possible. Um, and we are looking for uh, two people to fill two positions. So if you know anybody or if you are interested in joining our team, um, you can go look online and um, see the positions that are available. Some of the uh, themes that we um, cover in this department um, is protecting uh, the lands and nature, oceans and coasts, um, waterways and basins, and also climate uh, crisis. We uh, create different resources as well here in hispanicaccess.org, our website. You can see um, the resources that are um, available in Spanish as well and to, uh, also educate our community about what's happening um, in their communities and also in uh, nature and um, the environment. We also um, have uh, community uh, collaborations where we have these um, different films, Leche Miel, Milk and Honey, I Am Cheo, Hecho de Agua, Made from Water, Cartas de Amor, Letters of Love. Um, and we also have uh, panel discussions um, we also have leaders um, and we build leaderships um, and we have these um, different networks like Ola Si Acción, uh, also uh, Oya um, is the oceans-based network. Then we have Por La Creación, they are our faith-based leaders. Um, and then we also have the Climate Council. Um, and if you're interested in joining any of these networks, you can find the link um, here and you can uh, join our networks. We also take action. We have two initiatives, uh, Latino Conservation Week, a full week dedicated to the community um, connecting with uh, natural uh, resources. You can create an event, a kayaking trip, you can create a hiking trip um, or a karaoke night, um, something that um, connects you with your community and nature. This year we made a change um, and it'll be from September 14th through 22nd. We also have Latino Advocacy Week, which is a week where we all uh, join together um, and we advocate for clean airs, clean waters, and climate justice. And we'll also present some of the results from this survey um, so that our elected speakers can know um, can know what our community thinks. And this year it will be from May 20th to May 23rd. And now we're going to um, set the stage for Latinos and the environment. And we're going to talk about some of the details of the survey. It was um, conducted by telephone from January 4th to 21st, 2024. There were 893 voters of color. It was in Arizona, Colorado, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, uh, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, and Wyoming. The margin of error is approximately 3.28%. Um, and um, voters, uh, Native American and African American voters were oversampled, and the total column represents the combined voters of color. And then we're also uh, going to share the results of this survey later on, and we'll uh, sh show one of the results that really um, we felt like we needed to highlight. And then we're also gonna have speakers who are going to share their stories based on the different themes. So we're gonna talk about some of the uh, concerns faced by the Latino community. Um, and Latino communities are facing economic impacts and health impacts that are disproportionate um, due to extreme heat, um, low air quality, um, drought, um, and different severe effects of climate change, in addition to the alarming loss of nature in the entire country. It's possible that you have noticed these um, climate effects in your own communities. And now we're going to um, speak with Daniela Zavala, um, and she is... Good afternoon. Um, or good day, depending on where you um, found. This is uh, Daniela Zavala. Um, um, she's in, 
in charge of a nonprofit organization that deals with hunting and also in charge of um, protecting public lands and resources for future generations. Um, the mission is to amplify Latino voices that historically have been excluded um, in decision making, uh, in, in policies of um, environmental concern. And we are among the communities that are most impact, impacted by these changes. Some of the main worries are without a doubt climate change um, and because it has augmented and also um, intensely um, been affected by extreme meteorological effects like floods, wildfires, hurricanes, and heat waves that disproportionately affect our community. Um, Latinos are in the on the front lines of the climate crisis. Um, and the uh, statistics are alarming. For example, about 30% of Hispanic households don't have air conditioning and more than 40% of Latino households can't pay for the necessary electric bills to pay for these services. In addition to that, Latinos are the biggest um, um, population that works in the labor force outdoors and agriculture working outside affected by these dangerous temperatures and it's precisely these people who work in agricultural spaces outdoors who are specifically vulnerable um, or especially vulnerable to um, these changes in climate change and who are tremendously affected by the bad quality of the air, the uh, gas emissions, um, and also um, the um, atmosphere, atmospheric changes. Um, they're all results of climate change and approximately 2 million of Latinos live about half a mile from um, gas and petroleum and oil um, uh, spaces. So 44% um, of Latino lives in count, live in counties where there's a high risk of uh, flooding. Uh, according a study of the University of Arizona, Latinos suffer more from natural disasters because they tend to live in zones where the cost of living is cheaper, uh, but there is a unfortunately, a higher risk um, for flooding. Another risk is drought. Um, and it's clear that global um, warming has affected um, these uh, changes. Um, drought, which has affected um, the southwest of the country for the past three decades, um, is big and also in the state of Colorado, um, the water levels, the Colorado River has um, affected um, so many people and we know that it affects millions of people um, and it gives, uh, it provides water for one third of the Latino uh, Hispanic community in the country. Um, And it uh, takes up about 5 million acres of agricultural lands. And it is the Latinos who are the ones that actually work along the Colorado River. Um, and we have um, focused on uh, different uh, things to combat these climate uh, climatic changes um, and um, the different uh, gas house emissions. Um, and we want to make sure that the voices of of our Hispanic leaders are uh, heard so that we can uh, create innovative and inclusive solutions um, so that we know um, what is gravely affecting our community. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniela. Um, it's so interesting um, what you've shared with us as Vanessa and you're right. Um, there are very serious things occurring in our communities and it's difficult to uh, know how to deal with these situations. And now we're gonna see some of the results um, from uh, the Latino perspective to the survey. Uh, when Latinos were asked, when you think of the future of nature, meaning our lands, water, air, um, wildlife, what would you say that you feel? That you feel more hopeful or more worried? 28% of Latinos said that they feel more hopeful and 69% say that they feel more worried for the future of our um, natural environment. When they were asked, compared to other issues like economy, healthcare, and education, how important are issues involving clean water 
clean air, wildlife, and public lands for you in deciding whether to support an elected public official. 89% of Latinos said that it's completely, totally important, and 10% said that it was uh, not important or irrelevant. When asked um, about contamination and smog, 58% of Latinos said that it's of extreme or very serious um, worry, and 14% said that it's not a worry. Now we're going to go to speak about the next theme, which is the water concerns in the West. The rivers are not only waterways, they are the soul of our planet and they connect ecosystems, um, cultures and communities in intricate ways. Our, uh, today, we're going to be speaking with Ricardo Simmons, who is the exeter, and he works with um, the Catholic Federation in the United States. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for this opportunity for being here with you all. Um, I want to share a little bit about my work as a, a, a political um, advisor. And I'm going to share a little bit about my work, specifically about my community in the south of Colorado, north of New Mexico. That's like a little microcosm. Um, and, and we can share about the different interests and worries of Hispanics speaking in, in the West in, in a larger capacity. So specifically, this community in San Luis in the south of uh, south of Colorado, it's the, it's the um, poorest um, community in Colorado, the waters are contaminated, the worries had to do with um, their quality of, of their health. Um, and then um, this interested me and I started to work with um, people in this community. Um, then there was another part, uh, uh, another worry that was connected to the water that had to do with access um, and the work of a lot of the Hispanic people who were historically present there before Colorado was a state, before the United States was a country, they were working with the land. Um, and all of that impacted the economy. Um, and this also speaks to not only the Colorado River, like we've spoken about, but also about uh, many of the waterways um, that um, govern um, the work and the livelihood of um, many Hispanic people. Climate changes affect this very much. For example, in this zone in San Luis, there are a lot of um, metallic uh, contaminants in the water, but with less water, there is a bigger incidence um, or, or, or there, the the metals are now uh, more noticeable, and this is disproportionately affecting the health of people who are in contact with this water. Um, this also limits the uh, quantity of uh, the, uh, available water. Uh, people who work um, in different um, farms uh, or ranches. Um, and this is all evident. Uh, we can see it in the amount of snow in the peaks and also the amount of water, the production of water uh, for a lot of the people in the community. I would like to finish also by speaking a lot of things that I learned by these from these communities, which is not only how the water affects the uh, life of Hispanics, but also how the culture and the vision of Hispanic populations brings to the interest of conservation. Um, and here, now I'm going to risk to speak a little bit about the memory of this community. It's difficult to speak to uh, Hispanics in a totality. You know, here he's he's Brazilian, he's, uh, he's Latino, but not Hispanic. Um, there's a, a, a similarity, a cultural similarity in how we see these questions. And the question that I um, lay before you is like when we see a river um, or when we see a hill, what do we see? Um, and then since the beginning, they've seen that this uh, land was um, common, this concept of the ejido, which means that there are some lands that are private, but then there are some lands that are public, they're common lands. Um, and this was approved like 10 years ago by the Supreme Court in Colorado, um, giving access to the uh, 
common uh, to the people of the community to uh, private land. Um, and this history speaks to the relationship uh, of the natural resources. Another aspect is the cultural aspect, like for to put my children to sleep, I sing them Brazilian songs. Um, and there's one about the, the rains, the March rains, and then there's another one uh, about um, the drought in the north of Brazil. So when we speak to um, environmental concerns, there's a relationship, at least in my family, that creates a proactive vision for work um, and to and to face the cha challenges that we face naturally. Um, and then there's something um, that is also part of the Hispanic culture, which is this element of faith. Um, when we see the water, when we worry about the contamination, about our health, we also see that um, the water is like a path of faith. It is the, the material that we use for um, baptism, um, uh, health in Spanish, salud, and uh, salvation, salvacion, are connected. Um, and um, this creates a deeper connection to our conservation and the, to the care of um, our natural spaces. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ricardo, uh, says Vanessa. You are completely right. Um, water is connected to our hearts as spiritually. It's also um, connected to our well-being. Um, and now we're going to um, share some of the results um, connected to the water. So when Latinos were asked um, in regards to the low level of water in the rivers, 75% of Latinos think that this is an extreme or very serious issue, and 4% said that it's not a problem. The next result, when Latinos were asked about the poor drinking water quality in some lower income communities due to lead pipes, aging infrastructure, or uh, pollutants leaking into well water, 71% of Latinos said that it was an extremely serious issue and 5% said that it's not a problem. Um, when uh, Latinos were asked about microplastics, um, these are tiny uh, particles of plastic in rivers, streams, um, and drinking water supplies, 71% of Latinos said that it's extremely serious and 9% um, said that it's not a problem. It's very interesting to see these results. Um, and now we're going to speak about what do Latinos want for their public lands and waters? So all communities should have equitable access to these spaces and to their nearby spaces and the ability to reach them and to also have the char characteristics that honor them and they give a diverse aspect and linguistically, culturally. And these um, spaces should be administered in an, an inclusive way, in a local way, um, adhering to what the local communities uh, know and need, especially adhering to local indigenous and tribal um, ways of interacting with the land. Um, and the uh, the theft of lands that belong to Latino communities, um, res the restoration of nature should also be uh, issues that we think about in um, communities of color, especially in urban areas and in historically marginalized areas um, and to communities who are on the front lines of um, uh, climate justice. And now we're going to be listening to Pastor Juan Almanza. Hello, everybody, says uh, Pastor Juan. Um, speaking about public lands is a theme that is extremely um, extensive. Um, when Let's think about when we've gone to a park, to walk in the park, to walk through it, or to just sit and observe it, maybe to camp, or just to uh, take a selfie. You've already become part of more than 305 million people who last year visited all the public lands. And this includes parks, national monuments, etc. Because these public lands are not like this entity that's there that's empty. They're, they're lands that um, uh, are there to back up um, healthy ecosystems. And even if we don't think about it, they have a huge impact on the economy of the region. Last year, um, we 
um, were able to assist it with the support of um, Hispanic Access Foundation, um, a night that was created by um, Native communities in Arizona and Nevada um, in a part that is apparently a desert. But when you learn more about the ecosystem, um, the um, and antique ways of working with the cars, they had like a little thermostat. So if you remove the thermostat, um, then there was no register of when a car was going to overheat. There was no control. Um, and when we think of the deserts in the world, not only in the United States, they have this mechanism like a thermostat that helps regulate. So when we start invading, um, uh, removing resources, extracting um, minerals, these thermostats start to disintegrate. These uh, public land thermostats starts to disintegrate. Um, public lands are so important for us and let's say if we think of it uh, in terms of economy, um, it's estimated that uh, approximately last year, more than $200 million were moved in just park entrances um, to visit these public lands. 6.1 million um, jobs directly or indirectly in these spaces. And when we see the impact that is generated, you go to a park, you pay the fee, what you consume, the hotel, you are generating economy. Um, the states in the North um, West that have a lot of rural and public lands, it's detected an, an increase in uh, population. Um, and We've also seen um, a growth, economic growth, and also a type of state where there is um, more care for public lands. The health, for example, for clean air quality um, is much more um, improved in these areas than in other areas in the country. Um, in areas where uh, interest in public lands isn't there, then there's uh, it, it becomes complex. There's economic issues, uh, people that want to go and exploit these lands, thinking that um, those lands are useless, where in reality it's a silent um, usefulness that these places have um, for the balance in the ecosystem in um, the uh, biodiversity um, to be able to recreate to enjoy to go for walks to have contact with creator to be able to see these landscapes um, when we visit the uh, the grand canyon um, then it's 10 miles from one end to another. Um, this is not uh, man-made um, or, or a randomly created um, project. This is a work of art created by the creator. Um, and it's our creator um, who creates it, but then it's the federal government that manages and we need to be aware of what's happening. And since 2009, we've been lobbying um, in that point, I didn't speak much English, but we went to speak to uh, Congress uh, people and to senators. And, and one day, I remember we had 16 visits talking about carbon monoxide to the different emissions to the how the Latina populations um, are affected by all of this. And almost all of this um, management of public lands that we uh, we usually don't give it the importance that it needs. It's a silent impact. It's a discrete importance. It's a uh, low profile management, but very extremely important to take care of these public lands, mountains, deserts, rivers, um, uh, canyons. It's really important. Um, and these types of activities, these seminars, these surveys to provide our communities um, with this information um, in English and Spanish are extremely important. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for uh, keeping us informed. Thank you for giving us this small space to share some um, uh, data and some information. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Pastor Juan. Um, and contrarily, thank you for taking the time um, to come and to speak to us about the importance of these lands and deserts because it's so important um, for our mental and physical health um, to maintain public lands. So now we're gonna um, go to some of the results. When Latinos were asked about the loss of natural areas, 67% said that it's an extremely serious issue. 10% thought that it was not a problem. Another question was, when creating new national parks, national monuments, uh, national wildlife refuges, refuges and uh, tribal protected areas um, to protect historic sites or areas for outdoor recreation, 86% of Latinos are in full agreement and 12% um, completely oppose this. Another question is when achieving a national goal of conserving 30% of land and inland waters in the United States and 30% of its ocean areas by the year 2030, 84% of Latinos totally support this and 12% totally oppose this. So now we're going to speak about um, the results of what do Latinos want in terms of energy um, to be able to um, face the climate change and accessible um, ways of being are very important things for communities in the United States. Uh, the good news is that um, we can um, find solutions for this together. We can talk about um, equitable living um, and um, it can also um, increase the accessibility to different uh, living spaces. Um, and also clean energy is better uh, for the climate and also to help increase um, health um, for the community. And now we're going to speak with Aline uh, Castellan Gonzalez, who is going to share uh, with us her experience. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Aline Castellan. I'm 25 years old. I uh, was born in Hidalgo, Mexico. Um, uh, Mexico is my uh, home, my aunt, my uh, mom. We live here. Uh, I am part of Semilla Project, um, and uh, we prepare a, a new generation of young people to be leaders in their communities um, with outdoor experiences uh, and um, civic compromise. Uh, it was founded in 2021 um, for a group of immigrants. Um, we were sharing what a lot of people in the struggle, uh, the frustration we're feeling, and our connection to the land that we now call our home, the language that it helps us express, and the culture culture that unites us um, nourished our um, interest in becoming activists, but we reached a point where the focus um, was only about the political objectives. Um, and we think, uh, we feel like that's what united us, is what connected us, but then it, it, it limited us to focus only on the politics. So for us, it was very important to be able to um, innovate in how we see all of this, how to create connections with each other, with our land, where we live, and to um, continue moving forward to listen to the ideas of our community members. Um, the structure of green energy is going to reduce the emissions of carbon dioxide and also to create um, um, clean energy, but it will also create workforce or possibilities for jobs for our community um, to work in our schools, or we need to work with our schools to be able to implement a plan of study um, so that the people in our cities um, uh, can have resources for our community members. Um, there are lots of barriers that um, prevent our languages from coming together, uh, being language, um, lack of childcare, transport, especially especially in rural communities. There's also no pay. There's a lot of time where we're learning about these jobs. They don't, um, they don't provide payment um, for people who are learning. So it's important for our communities to remain together. Um, it's very frequently, frequently members of our community need to go to other countries to be able to create jobs. So what I want is for us to create a route here that focuses on our experiences and our identities, and it will help us keep our community united and um, more um, and stronger. Um, 
I'm someone very important in this mission. I also started doing uh, uh, loving. I was knocking on doors. But when I became part of the structure and the strategy is when I was able to organize myself in a better way and to support my community in a different way. And this is why I feel that it's different to be a part of um, this uh, panel um, and of this opportunity to listen to what is happening in our homes. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Aline and um, Vanessa. It's very important to find resources, organizations that have more information. Um, let's talk about some of the results. Um, in terms of energy. So when Latinos were asked, um, which one would you prefer your member of Congress place more emphasis on in upcoming decisions regarding national or public lands, ensuring we protect sources of clean water, our air quality and wildlife habitat while providing opportunities to visit and recreate in our national public lands, or ensuring we produce more domestic energy by maximizing the amount of national public lands available for responsible oil and gas drilling and mining. Latinos said 78% to protect and 19% that we need to produce. The next question was requiring oil and gas companies rather than federal and state governments to pay for all of the cleanup and land restoration costs after drilling is finished. 89% of Latinos are in total support, where 10% totally oppose. Another results were about um, removing protections on some areas of existing national public lands, particularly national monuments, to allow more drilling, mining, and other development. 26% of Latinos are in total support, 73% uh, totally oppose it. So these are some of the results for energy, but there are more that we also wanted to know. So other results are when it comes to managing public lands to ensure that there are more outdoor spaces free of light pollution to see the stars at night. 91% of the Latina community is in total support and 8% is uh, totally opposed. Another question is, when it comes to constructing wildlife crossing structures across major highways, that intersect with known migration roads, 78% of Latinos are in total support and 21% are uh, totally opposed. And lastly, um, when it comes to uncontrollable wildfires that threaten homes and property, 61% of the Latina community thinks that it is extremely serious and 8% say that it's not a problem. So the conclusion um, to um, the results of this survey, although it wasn't all of the questions, but like I mentioned at the beginning, you're gonna have access to all of the questions from the survey later. Um, the survey tells us that Latinos are worried about the future of nature. And this means lands, water, uh, wildlife, air, um, and to address climate change. Latinos, um, Firmly support um, conserving 30% um, of lands and inlands waters and 30% of its waters and oceans by uh, 20, 30%, which is also known as 30 by 30 or America the Beautiful. Latinos support investing in traditionally disinvested communities with more parks and access to clean water. Like our panelists said, it's very important for our mental health, our spiritual health, and our physical health. Uh, Latinos, uh, as Latinos, we love our uh, public lands. Um, and now we have a bit of time um, to have a moderated uh, discussion, and we're going to bring all of the panelists to the screen, and we're going to have time for um, uh, all of you who are here as guests um, to ask some questions if you're at home or at work. Um, we also have some questions in the chat. So we're going to bring um, some of the questions 
to uh, the forefront. So the first question here says, okay, so, hi, I'm from Southern California. All, it also depends on the uh, Colorado River flows. Any chance that we can expand the survey to capture voices in our Latino communities? So yes, um, the River Colorado, the Colorado River does go through the south of California, and this is a very big question um, for people who cr uh, create the survey, which is the Colorado College uh, State of the Rockies, and we can make a suggestion for the next um, survey, which will be uh, in 2025. Another question is from Yami from the uh, San Diego Foundation. Thanks for a great panel conversation with key data that uplifts Latino voices in conservation. I would encourage everyone to connect with your local community foundation um, for funding support for such a key nonprofit work. Do any of the panelists' organizations have representatives or connections in San Diego? Thank you. So if anyone has any connections in San Diego and you would like to be part of another panel, uh, you wanna speak about um, conservation, um, Yamilet Carrillo is looking for people. So um, we also have other questions um, from other um, guests here. Um, we are accepting and welcome all of your questions. So we have two people who are raising their hands. Murphy Woodhouse um, is going to have the chance to speak. So thank you very much for the invitation um, and the presentation. Um, a question that I have is um, that a lot of um, environmental and conservation movements in the states have a complex history of exclu uh, racial exclusion and uh, racism towards um, uh, famous or important people like Edward Abbey, just to name one figure. But um, what, how we see in these um, this data that's presented, um, the Latina uh, population um, at least has the same level of worry as other groups, racial groups in the United States, or even more. Um, so I just wanted to hear your comments about the importance of, um, you know, a highlighting data like this, um, because I think it's um, very important um, that it's known that Latinos um, also have these feelings and these uh, perceptions. And Vanessa says, yes, thank you very much. Um, would anybody like to answer uh, about the importance of having this data um, from the Latino community and the importance in the space of conservation and uh, climate awareness? Daniela says, well, before entering this presentation, um, yesterday they published um, general statistics um, and seeing the presentation is very clear when you compare it to um, the general statistics, um, to the statistics of Latinos, the percentages that we see about the uh, Latino community's worries are the highest percentages. So this really clearly shows that our community has a worry about conservation that is even more than other groups um, that were asked in this survey, um, that uh, sometimes their opinions are more uh, taken into account and our community is excluded. But what we love to see in a panel like this, in this organizations like this, but also Hispanic Access, we're able to see that they're trying to amplify uh, the voices within the Hispanic community so that there's equity, so that we can be taken into account, so that we can really have a true social justice. And these results clearly show that the voters um, from the um, states that were surveyed, but also Latinos, want our elected officials to be conservation leaders. They want us, they want the elected leaders to find solutions 
um, to the uh, climate issues that are disproportionately affecting the members of our communities. We want a responsible management of our public lands when it has to do with extraction and drilling and mining. Um, and that uh, these are public lands that belong to all of us. And also to guarantee um, the protection of the um, natural resources for future generations, because if we don't protect these natural resources now, these waters, what's going to be left for our children? So I think that these results are extremely important. These surveys are very important so that our leaders take the make the correct decisions and so that it's like a wake-up call for them like hey elections are coming the voters are going to be really aware of what your positions are as candidates when it comes to terms of conservation issues and that are uh impacting us in a deep way um and a federal level local level and state level So now Ricardo is going to speak. Yes, I just wanted to add, uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, response, uh, question and also response from Daniela, but yes, it's so important to recognize um, historically how there's like a, an elitism in the conservation efforts. It was conservation, but for some communities of color were not involved. This is a great opportunity for us as Hispanics to participate in the uh, good that has happened, but also to um, show up from your own perspective and to have an integrated vision for conservation, which is a general movement of con within conservation where he, uh, the humane and economic uh, necessities are not opposed to conservation. And I think that it's a great, um, it, it, it's something great that the Hispanic community can provide for the United States. Let's see, excellent, uh, excellent question and answers, says Vanessa. Um, thank you so much for being part of the community. Uh, and Murphy says, um, thank you very much for the comments. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, now we have Yamilet Carrillo. Thank you very much. Uh, apologies for having my question in English first. I just wanted to clarify that I love the presented uh, presentations and the discussions and conversation because you are bringing the voice of everyone's voice and the non-traditional voices, um, with the voices that aren't always captured in um, a environmental organizations per se. So also from the perspective of faith, com different connections with our community um, and my recommendations recommendation uh, related to the question that I asked before is that the um, San Diego Foundation, which is a community-based foundation that focused on just one community, we generally are interested in these types of projects that you present in general. We may not all have an uh, environmental programming, um, but the connections with the community, physical and mental, mental health, how you mentioned, are extremely important, even for us who don't have funds for environmental issues. Our, um, our foundation in San Diego does have a focus, um, and we also focus in different um, uh, nations because we have uh, shared ecosystems. But if any of the panelists have representation representatives or do you work with other organizations in San Diego, I would love to meet and also with Hispanic Access Foundation and just to let you know that there's a, a climate funders uh, collaborative um, of uh, fo community foundations that are focused solely on um, environmental issues in the southwest of California, but there's also like a whole um, network of community foundations um, on a national level that we can connect you with um, that focus on um, uh, these that are interested in these kinds of surveys. Um, people like Alina and Semillitas and um, the different pastors are um, also bringing forth to the community. So thank you. Um, and thank you so much. Um, these uh, results will be shared with all of you um, that registered, and then you can share them with other organizations as well. Um, I also have a comment from uh, Carolina Carrillo. 
This is Carolina Carrillo from Semilla Project. Thank you for the information. We should have more informative um, forums to, to uh, bring awareness to um, um, uh, our Latino community and within our language as well. There is a lot of programming that, that we have in Spanish, and this is a barrier um, for our community. My parents were born in Mexico. This information is difficult for them to understand in English. So if we had um, in uh, information in, in Spanish and other, um, uh, and, and other languages, it's very important for our community and for um, our members. The next question is, what do you think that the uh, political, um, elected political um, representatives receive from these results? Pastor Juan Almanza says it would be good to uh, bring awareness to them about these themes. We think that th I think that these themes are highly politicized and overly politicized. Um, so everything that has to do with um, the environment, it's really, it's not political, they're life decisions. Um, so sometimes in overly politicizing them for economic interests or whatever it may be, um, it creates issues. And so what can we do in this case with a Spanish speaking community? Um, sometimes we um, we um, share our experiences or our worries in diverse ways. So it's better to send a letter to the representative, send an email, uh, leave a voicemail, and sometimes we go out to the streets and those are not the appropriate channels. The appropriate channels to be able to receive responses in terms of um, environmental issues or anything that we require is in these ways. Call the senators, state um, representatives, uh, Congress people that go to Washington. It's always good. Email them letters signed by hundreds or thousands of people. Um, these are ways to um, make sure that they will put into action all of these things that they promise during their campaigns, but then when they come into office, they forget about. Uh, Vanessa says, yes, the power of community um, and the, to be together in community. Does anyone else have a response? What can we tell um, our decision makers um, in terms of these results? Marina says that she would um, like to know, like in the sense of the work that she does, um, and how she mentioned she feels that her life changed when she was able to give her identity and her personality um, to spaces where they it's were um, making decisions because she feels that um, although I'm in my community and I hear these stories, when I'm in those spaces, I realize that these stories are not being shared in those decision-making spaces. Um, and that it's been sustained by a system um, that wasn't inclusive of us. So when, when they don't hear our stories enough, they don't think about us, they don't think in the things that are affecting in our, our communities, um, and that when we hear all of this and we inform ourselves, we can um, take so much more than just our, our identity that represents our community. Um, and it's important for, um, as Pastor Juan says, that it's important for us to keep writing, to keep speaking with our senators and and to uh, keep this as a representation that it's not just one of us there are thousands of us that are uh, having these experiences and that are um uh, experiencing um these types of things that um we maybe weren't even part of um what uh caused this pollution what um these things that are happening Vanessa says, yes, that's how it is. So thank you very much to all of the panelists for being here, um, for all of our um, guests as well. And we know that everyone has the right to a healthy environment, uh, clean waters, lands, um, air, um, people who are resilient to natural um, uh, natural disasters, preservation of our um, heritage. Uh, and it's so important to... Um, avoid discrimination, and also to correct historical injustices. Um, 
environmental justice can't be uh, can't be successful without social justice. And if we want to um, remove um, systemic racism from these spaces, um, remember that we are in an a, a year of elections. This is not a secret that the climate changes affect all of us independently of the differences um, that we have. But remember that Latino voters um, want someone who has a, a progressive climate um, justice and we want everybody to um, actually follow up on um, these environmental crises. Latinos want to reconstruct our economy, um, in investing in green infrastructure, clean energy, and to also have legislation that guarantees clean waters and airs. Thank you so much for um, joining us today, for accompanying us today. Thank you for these panelists, for being leaders of the community. Thank you so much. Um, the, today's programming has finished, and we're going to share the results with all of you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next year.